Okay, Gus. Good, good, good morning. Thank you for waiting. Thank you for being here for the stakeout at the, uh, the start of the high-level meeting on ending AIDS of the General Assembly. Uh, without further ado, let me introduce uh, the two gentlemen who are going to speak. Uh, the President of the General Assembly, Mr. Mons Lukatov, followed by the Executive Director of UNAIDS, Mr. Michel Sidibe. Uh, Mr. President, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Uh, just a moment ago, member states approved the common declaration of this conference and have committed themselves making history actually to set targets uh, to a visionary platform for ending AIDS epidemic in 2013. It's fair to say that negotiations haven't been easy. They continued to the very last moment. And it, I would like to thank the member states for their efforts and willingness to make necessary compromises in order to achieve this political declaration and move the, uh, the uh, whole uh, work with HIV AIDS a step forward. The world has already made such, so much progress since another historic moment, the adaption of the landmark 2001 declaration on our commitment on HIV AIDS. But as I said also at the opening of the conference, we are, AIDS is not over. There are many gaps, many challenges remain unsolved. More than 36 million people are living with HIV and we still have more than 2 million new infections in each year. So this new political de uh, declaration comes at a pivotal moment. We know what works, the science, the tools, and the medicine exist to end the AIDS epidemic, committing to invest over the coming four to five years will in end the AIDS epidemic as a public health problem uh, by 2030. The political declaration provides the commitment to fast track the response between now and 2030, 2020, 2020. It provides a commitment to bold targets with regard to treatment, prevention, gender equality, human rights, and community empowerment. And it addresses squarely the needs of children, adolescents, young people, women, as well as the specific groups of higher risk uh, uh, of HIV infection. Scaling up access to HIV prevention and treatment services will be crucial, and we must be open to everyone, women, adolescent girls, that must have access to sexual and reproductive health services. Young people must be involved in making decisions about their health needs, and stigma and discrimination must end so that sex workers, people who in direct jobs, gay men, uh, other men that have sex with men, transgender people, and people who infect, who inject drugs, can access services they need. Ending AIDS as a public health problem uh, is firmly grounded on the Agenda 2030 on Sustainable Development Goals. The response to HIV will be fully supported by the interlinkages and political vision of this agenda, and AIDS response will make a significant contribution to actually implementing the whole basket of sustainable development goals. Today, as I said, I applaud members for their vision and commitment uh, to make sure that the outcome of the high-level meeting matches the level of ambition. So, together, we can end the AIDS epidemic, and we must leave no one, no group, no individual behind in these efforts. My friends, Michel Sidibe. Thank you very much. Uh, it is a very important moment for all of us because uh, this uh, political declaration uh, is coming at a defining moment in the fight against HIV AIDS. Really, I can say that uh, we move from despair to hope. You have to remember that a few years back, millions of people were not having hope. I was traveling in Africa in different parts of the continent and was seeing just hospital full of people dying. Today we managed to put 17 million people on treatment, which is a 
a real success story because it is a success of a global solidarity, is a demonstration of a, a movement from a scientists, from a civil society, from all the groups who came together to demonstrate that we can produce those results. Like I said also, uh, we managed also to demonstrate that we can have a generation free of HIV. People were just thinking that we were dreaming. And after Cuba, we have Thailand, we have uh, uh, certainly Belarus, uh, Armenia, who are, have been uh, certified yesterday that uh, they eliminated the transmission from mother to child. But we have 80 countries who have less than 50 babies born every year. We will be able to say soon that uh, we have a generation free of HIV. I want to say that uh, uh, it's not done. Uh, it is uh, still um, a, a challenge for the world because uh, we still have uh, 20 million waiting for treatment. We still have 19 million people who don't know their status. We still have, unfortunately, high rate infection uh, amongst uh, adolescent girls, young women. Uh, we still have uh, people living uh, uh, with uh, HIV being excluded, discriminated, uh, facing prejudice and uh, uh, stigma, and uh, they are not uh, coming out because uh, they are scared. They, so the fear is there, and we need uh, to use this political declaration to quicken pace, to accelerate, and uh, to fast track, and uh, to reach those people who are, uh, unfortunately, actually in the shadows. Thank you very much. Let's take some questions. I think for me, we have to just uh, say to the youth that uh, they are not anymore a passive beneficiaries of our program. They are actors of change. I'm traveling a lot, and I can say. It's about to begin. Meeting of the General Assembly panel discussion is about to begin. Yes. I want just to say to the youth that they are not anymore a passive beneficiaries of our program. They are actors of change. We need to equip them. We need to bring skills. We need to make sure that sexuality education become a reality everywhere so they can really be able to avoid risky behavior. But more than that one, I, we cannot do it without them. I'm traveling a lot. I came from Ivory Coast. I came. Yes. I came from every cause. I was just saying, 70, 70 percent of uh, the people are below 30 years old. How you can really uh, uh, change the face of the epidemic, which is a sexually driven epidemic, without uh, equipping them, without making them actor of change? They need job. They need uh, certainly participation. They need to be with us, uh, not anymore as a passive beneficiary. If I may add just one sentence. The question about use is also the question about maximum quality information yes. and education. And for that reason, we all have to appeal to donors to come forward to support this marvelous organization, UNAIDS, in their work with this. It's a little uh, disturbing that we have some cuts in donor subsidies now uh, because it's exactly the increase of information and education that's most needed right now. Thank you very much. Thank you. You know, I alerted uh, already the world uh, four years or five years ago in uh, Kinshasa when uh, we had a francophone meeting by saying that uh, the francophone world, particularly uh, West Africa and Central Africa, were left behind. I repeat it today. I think we need uh, just uh, to mobilize against uh, the political leaders. In uh, West Africa and Central Africa, the epidemic was not so big. So people were not uh, alarmed by uh, uh, the situation. 
and but today, unfortunately, they are left behind, and we need to mobilize the political leaders. Like I said, we need to make sure that we triple the initiation on treatment uh, within three years. That should be our goal. Cultural sensitivity. It, it, it's, it's obvious that cultural sensitivities has played uh, a very big role in all the difficulties we have met during this process. And of course, many of us hope that at the end, the evidence we have of what works, the evidence we have on the necessity to integrate all key populations uh, uh, in the efforts against this epidemic will prevail. But, but there are different opinions. There are limitations for how uh, long we can come with a consensus in the whole UN family. And I think that's reflected also right now in the explanations for vote in the assembly hall. Okay. Difficult answer. To yeah, but I think in, uh, anything uh, uh, linked to sexuality is very complex. Is about taboo. Is about norms. Is about uh, uh, the position of people in the society. It's about uh, so many factors, cultural factors, economic factors. That's why it is so complex. It's not uh, easy to deal with a political declaration when you talk about uh, HIV AIDS. You're uh, you're confronting a different uh, society, different epidemic. So I personally feel that uh, we should be proud of already uh, having a political declaration which is including people left behind, mentioning them, which is uh, calling for uh, front-loading, making global solidarity, uh, continuing to act, and also calling for uh, transforming uh, society to make it better by making it inclusive. Uh, Mark Murray, Guyana Newsroom. Sir, uh, with the Caribbean being the second most affected region in the world, what would be your message to Caribbean leaders at this time, especially with them not being able to pass legislations which affects mostly the vulnerable community within the region? I think we are seeing a lot of change. I, I remember we could not even talk about uh, a man having sex with man a few uh, uh, years ago. But today I'm seeing uh, leaders more and more coming and trying to think about uh, location population, trying to analyze which group is affected, where, and how we can really have, uh, like uh, the President of General Assembly was saying, how we can educate, how we can share information. But also they are trying to think about reforming the laws making sure that uh, law become more conducive and uh, help uh, people uh, to be protected. Uh, Johannes Schmidt with the German Press Agency. Um, Mr. Sibide, how far is the war on drugs, the global war on drugs, affecting the fight against AIDS? And are governments or member states doing enough to not treat uh, infected uh, drug addicts as, crimin as criminals, but to rather treat them, you know, as as infected people and helping them and not stigmatize them by offering, you know, uh, syringe exchanges, needle exchanges. You know, I, I think that is uh, one of the biggest challenges uh, we are facing. Uh, anytime you're criminalizing, uh, you're losing people. They're hiding, they're going underground, and they're continuing to infect. And that's why we are really working with uh, different uh, uh, countries uh, to make sure that they can remove uh, punitive laws, because those punitive laws are not working. I remember traveling in China, and uh, it was zero tolerance for people who were injecting drugs. And we managed to show to China that uh, putting uh, people uh, uh, in uh, the detention center, making sure that will not uh, be certainly the most effective. China has today the biggest, I said, the biggest program of uh, arm reduction 
so management of the risk for people injecting drugs in Asia. They are even about to eliminate the transmission amongst the drug users. So we have a good example, but we still fight to make sure that we will be able to win in Eastern Europe and Central Asia. It is our areas of failure, but we are seeing sign of progress. I'm sure Russia and others will be able to join the effort for controlling this epidemic amongst the drug users, because if not, AIDS will continue to grow. I can certainly align myself with what Michel has just said, and I could add, of course, as you pointed out in the question, this discussion was taken in a very parallel way during the UNCAS yeah. session we had uh, recently here on drugs. Uh, and, and uh, of course, there is a strong linkage between how you deal with drug use, how you deal with fighting uh, the AIDS epidemic. Uh, and, and what was present at the, the UNGAS meeting was a lot of evidence of the need to deal with these problems as health problems and not as criminal offences. Yes. Your last question over here. Uh, Evelyn Leopold, Huffington Post contributor. Uh, why weren't uh, the LGBT groups included in any panel? And secondly, you mentioned gays as people you wanted to reach. Over 70 countries, UN members, uh, discriminate against criminalized gays. Many others discriminate. How in, can you reach them? If they're openly gay or thought to be gay, how, the, how can they get treatment? And also, uh, can you? What is the progress on sex education for young? Sex education for young people. It must be difficult to. F I'm sure you you know most of the the answer to these questions. There are a lot of differences in opinion inside this huge family of nations. Uh, and on the civil society participation in this meeting, just a few remarks. Uh, we have rules and regulations that makes it possible for each and every country to reject a particular organization. Unfortunately, that rule has been used to a certain extent. We, travel, we tried uh, through my office to negotiate with those member states that wanted to reject organizations. We reduced the number of rejected organizations, and I understand that a number of delegations, national delegations, have included uh, representatives of the rest of, of those organizations, which I think is good. But, 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 but we, we haven't been able to come uh, much longer within the regulations adopted by the member states themselves about these con kind of conferences. My personal opinion is, in every work we're doing in the United Nations, it's beneficial to include as much as possible the civil society, the affected populations, the groups of interest. We know that from the whole process of approving the Sustainable Development Goals, that only became such an ambitious project because 8 million people and a lot of civil society organizations took part in the discussion. And whatever we have tried to do uh, during my presidency here is as far as member states accept and rules and regulation permits to include civil society in all ev uh, events taking place inside these halls. And I, I want even to add a data with the President of General Assembly and his office. We have been able uh, to make sure that uh, we secure the presence even of transgender in, uh, different, in some panels. So we have all groups who are represented in the different panels. It's so important for us because uh, their voice are critical, their effort to make sure that uh, they can reach others is critical. Thank you very much. How can you reach them for treatment in the countries that openly discriminate against gays? I think uh, uh, that's what I was just saying. Um, it's impossible uh, to reach uh, uh, 
20 million people if the people are stigmatized, if they are discriminated, or if they are excluded, they will go underground and will have a challenge to reach them. That's why we still have 19 million people who don't know their status. We are really with this political declaration, one of the main, main, main aim is to start, uh, like I said, one by one, uh, breaking the bounds of uh, stigma, discrimination, and uh, Exclusion. Thank you very much. Thank you very Thank much you. indeed. Thanks Thank for coming. You. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Yeah, yeah, please. Yeah, yeah, please. <laughs>